Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be creating this hologram effect and we're going to be doing this entirely with math. And while we'll be using a fair few little functions, we're not going to go into too much detail into how they actually function. We're just going to go into how to use them because I believe it's far more important to know how to use them and know when to use them than it is to know how they actually function. Though certainly if you do get interested in any of these, Google them. They are very interesting to learn. But let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new shader and I've already created that. We're just calling it hologram. This effect is going to be built up from a couple different effects. The first one is going to be a scan line, and that's just going to be lines across the surface going upwards. Then we're going to have an edge shader, and then we're also going to have a highlight around meshes. And then right at the edges, we're also going to have it fade away. So the first thing we're going to need is the fragments world position. We can do this by creating a new node for the vertex input, as well as a new node for inverse view matrix. And the inverse view matrix, you can kind of just think of it as like a transform that if you multiply any vector by it, it will convert it from local space into the actual world space. So if we go ahead and do a new transform multiply and we drag in that input and we go ahead and output that into the Albedo, you can see it's green now because the Y axis is greater than one. But if we move it down below, you can see it turns black and then over here it turns red. And that's just because the different positions are being output as greater or lesser than one, which can't really be rendered via graphics. So we can go ahead and leave that right there. And in this case, what we're really going to be needing is actually the Y axis. So if we go ahead and break it down here, the green is the Y axis. So we can go ahead and drag that out. And we're going to drag that into what is called a sine function. And now a sine function basically just takes any value that is constantly increasing. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. And it converts it from that to 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and back and forth as a wave function. So if we go ahead and drag that into the albedo, and we remember it's on the y-axis, if you drag it upwards, you can see it fades black, and then eventually it'll fade white again. Now this isn't perfect for what we want. We do want it to be closer together. So let's go ahead and create a new multiply node. We'll just drag that into that line and we'll drag out of that multiply node and add a float parameter. Now float parameters are just values that we can change in editor. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a range and I'm gonna set that range to zero to a thousand and let's set it to something like 500. And you can see these are very bright, but you can start to see exactly what I'm doing here. But now we need to handle the fact that it's going between negative one and one. We need to clamp that. So in order to do that, we're just going to add one to it. And then we're also going to divide by two. And this is gonna take it from negative one to one to zero to one. If we go ahead and put that into the Albedo, we can now see a much more desirable result. And that doesn't look bad at all. Now we do need to go ahead and move them upwards over time. So let's go ahead and add in a subtract node. We're gonna drag that in right there. And we're gonna be subtracting from it time, which is an input, multiplied by a float parameter. And this float parameter, we're just gonna call both of these scanline width and scanline speed. Now scanline speed, let's go ahead and create a new range and let's make that say 15 default. So now you can see they are slowly panning upwards. All right, and that pretty much does it for the lines. We'll use these in pretty much every other part of it, but for now, that will work just fine. We do need to go ahead and create our Fresnel effect. Now, a Fresnel effect essentially just takes the dot product of our view direction and the normal and outputs a result. So let's go ahead and create one of those. So we can right click and create Fresnel. Now, this function pretty much does everything that you need it to do. If we go ahead and just pass it into the Albedo and click the little button up here at the top right to look at the generated code, you can see how we're using the power of the clamp result of the dot product, which in essence just means that we're adding in a little bit of functionality to control specifically the power. So if we just set this to something like two, you can see the Fresnel gets farther towards the edges. We do need to go ahead and expose this. So we're gonna create a new float parameter for this one. We're going to call this one flow for now power and we're going to set it to a default of two. Now, before we add this, I also want to go ahead and combine in at this point, the actual proximity highlight. So to do that, we can use something called a proximity fade. Now, proximity fade is actually surprisingly, despite the fact that it's much smaller than the Fresnel, much more complicated than the Fresnel. It takes in quite a lot of different information in order to construct that. And it uses something called a depth texture, which is a little bit outside of the realm of this tutorial, but I'm definitely gonna be doing a tutorial on it in the future. But safe to say for now, it just takes the distance between the current position on the mesh and any meshes behind it and outputs it. In this case, based off of a distance, which in this case is just one. Let's go ahead and create a new float parameter for that. We're gonna call that float parameter proximity highlight. We're gonna give it a default of something like 0.3. 
All right, so let's go ahead and invert that because I don't really want it to be black to white. I want it to be white to black. So let's go ahead and do one minus. Now one minus, all this does is take whatever the value is, take one and subtract the value from that. So as a result, instead of zero to one as a gradual scale, it will now be one to zero as a gradual scale. This is very useful for any time you want to invert a value that is clamped between zero and one. So let's go ahead and add these two functions together and see what the result looks like. And that's starting to get somewhere. So let's go ahead and multiply this by our scan lines. Now you can start to see the effect we're having. Now, if you look right at the edges, I don't want it to ever be black right at the edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a mix function. What a mix function does is blend between the A value and the B value by whatever the weight is. In this case, we're just gonna blend it halfway. And we're gonna blend it between the version that has the scan lines and the version that was the original version. And now we have right at the edges, we have a little bit of the original version. It just kind of softens everything up. Now you could definitely pull this out and actually make it its own value, but for now this will work just fine. Now in addition to this, I do want to factor back in the scan lines in the center a little bit. What we're going to do to create that is we're going to multiply the scan lines by a float parameter, and we're going to call this scan line center weight. We're just going to set it to a range between 0 and 1, and let's put it at something like 0.02. Now we can just go ahead and add that back into the original. Now you can see ever so slightly right in the center, you can still see the scan lines. Now there is one more proximity fade I wanna do and that's right along the edge, I wanna fade it out. So let's go ahead and create a new proximity fade. And just like before, we're gonna plug in a float parameter for the distance and this one's going to be called proximity fade alpha. And let's set to something very small like 0.2. And without inverting this one, we're gonna go ahead and multiply the original by it. And then we can go ahead and pass that into the alpha. And so now you see it's like real black right at the edge. Now, the end result of all this is if we go ahead and pass this into the alpha function and break it out of the albedo, you can see the end result doesn't look terrible. Now, there is one thing I want to do to improve this. If we go over to the actual material and select the shader, you can see we have a bunch of different modes and flags. These are very complicated and there's a lot of different options here, but in our case, the only thing that we need to know is the cull here we want to set to disabled. And this is going to let us see the actual mesh on the far side of it behind the mesh that is currently rendering. This lets us see the effect in a little bit better detail and allows us to have this nice blend on the far side. Now that's pretty much the majority of the effect, but we do need to handle the color and emission. So let's go ahead and do that. First off, we need a color parameter and we're gonna have a default value here. I already had this value lying around. It's 439CD0 on the hex value. You can use whatever you want. If you want it blue or red as the case may be. We're gonna go ahead and drag it out into a multiply function. Now make sure you don't select these operators up here at the top. You do want a multiply by vector three. And we're going to bring in another float parameter that is going to be the emission brightness. We're just going to call that other one the base color. All right, and you can go ahead and pass in the results of that one into the emission function. And let's set the base to something like 20. And then we're going to set the output, the base output, into the albedo. Oh, and one last thing. I almost forgot. We're going to go ahead and use the mix function to blend between this and black based off of the scan lines and that gives us a much stronger scan line effect. All right, and hopefully that was helpful. It's nothing too complicated, but it does hopefully give you a little bit of an introduction to time and sign functions, and I'm not displeased with the end result. It actually looks pretty good. If you lower the color brightness, you can actually get some interesting results, but then you can also just always multiply it back up to get it brighter on the emission side of things. But yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll be back here next week, probably with inventories, but I don't know. We'll see what we end up with. Thank you all for watching.